Ladies and gentlemen, international recording stars, the Four Seasons. I not only like this music, but I also like the story, it's sort of delinquents that make it big. Jersey Boys is the quintessential rags to riches story. These are average guys with superhuman skills who became superstars. Oh, what a night. Late December, back in 63. At the very beginning, nobody knew quite why somebody had picked Frankie Valley and Four Seasons to do a show on. You're expecting just another bubblegum musical. Well, they were far from that. When you go back into it, you see that they came up as juvenile delinquents. <laughs> they were guys from Newark, New Jersey. Hey! The projects, working class Italian guys, in and out of jail. With friends like that, you should change your name to Sinatra. I'm gonna be as big as Sinatra. And music came and pulled them out and gave them something to really strive for. Sherry. Nick Massey was the arranger. Bob Gaudio became their songwriter. Tommy DeVito was the brawn, and Frankie Valli was the voice. Frankie does have not only a great voice, but very unusual. Sherry, can you come out tonight? After 30 seconds, I know I need to write for this voice. Before Bob Gaudio came into the picture, the music was pretty much cover songs. Bob Gaudio, the music he's written, the songs he's written, he's incredible. Nick Massey, he was the guy who never studied arranging or anything. He just kind of heard it. So he was responsible, some say, for that iconic Four Seasons sound. Tommy DeVito is someone who has a lot of courage, but he's also had a lot of problems. You think it's easy dealing with the club owners, the managers, the record companies? It wasn't always the cleanest path to success. These guys were involved with the Mafia. Chip DiCarlo, he was kind of a mob boss, I guess. But he helped Frankie Valli when he was young and continued to be part of his life. I'm my way back to you. A lot of people don't even realize all of the songs that are Frankie Valli and the Four Seasons. So one of the first times I saw the show, I was like, oh my god, and this song and that song. It was just like, again, you get chills like the, throughout the whole show. I knew it was a tremendous hit, and uh, I thought it would be a nice, uh, nice challenge. Come ahead. What's been so great about the way Clint and his team have produced the movie is bringing in all these people who did the show on stage who really know it. He values the truth that these actors are bringing to the roles because they help to create these roles. How great to watch a legendary Hollywood director turn into an enraptured audience member in front of you. You know, that's fantastic. Everybody loves working for him. It's this environment of Focused, fun. Oh, well, it was great fun. You'd go home humming a different song every day. Everybody's just 100% on their game, ready to act, sing, and maybe even dance. Jersey Boys is for everybody. A lot of people say it's the musical that guys drag their girlfriends to. It's something in its own entity. And it's more like a backstage pass to what was going on when these guys were making it as big as they were. I love you, baby. Clint Eastwood movies will always have a lot of depth. And I think he's going to bring that essence of the 50s and 60s. You're going to feel like you really are there. Who loves you, pretty baby? It's about real people. It's about stuff that really happened. Families and brotherhoods breaking up and the rise and fall of this band. <laughs> Their blue-collar rise to fame is something that speaks to fraternity, to brotherhood, the family, and the neighborhood. Humble beginnings, struggle to survive, struggle to make good. These guys who were really headed in the wrong direction kind of took that from the streets Jersey energy into the recording studio and became really a phenomenon. Oh.